Welcome to the Chaos Common Metrics meeting for Thursday, March 3rd. We have uh, we have quite a few things on the agenda today, actually. So maybe I'll just share my screen and we can go ahead and get started. Okay. Um, so the first thing we have on the agenda is to review the action items for last week. So we have, Sean is gonna take a look at how to create labels across metrics, the metrics working groups. Did you get a chance to do that, Sean? I have not finished that yet, no. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna move that. You begin. <laughs> I was gonna move that here. Not yet. Um, so we have them for next week. Uh, Matt, you're gonna explore the impact of issue and PR templates across repos. Uh, yeah. The doc also, and stuff. No, I also didn't do that. Um, okay. Hmm. I will actually take a look at that. Sorry about that. No, no worries. I guess part of it, I've been thinking a little bit about like, we might want to think about how we, I don't know, like there's so many different repositories. And there's so many different ways that people work in those repositories for fair reason. So for like yeah. the way that obviously the software works, the way that tra the translations repo works is quite different than maybe. Well, you can you can override those, right? So you can. if you put if you put an org wide issue template, we could do something relatively generic, and then okay. if, if a working group or a particular repo has a very specific way of working. All they mm -hmm. need to do is put a different one in their .github okay. folder and it will override it. Because we we so we just had this discussion within VMware because okay. we put together org-wide relatively detailed issue um, templates. And somebody else was like, I don't like these. I don't want it. Don't make me take it. Um, and we're like, all you have to do is just override it with a blank one or one that just says, you know, file your issue here. That was um, exactly so it. Somebody okay. was making it more complicated than it than it needed to be. Um, but yeah, we should think about what, what bits are likely to be common across all of them. What are we likely to want to ask people for? And then people just people just need to override it for. Okay. Um, and the override, it just, it completely like obliterates the, the top level it, template. Yeah, it doesn't use the okay. top level one at all. It only uses the, uh, the one at the, it's okay. the same thing like code of conduct, right? If you have a code yeah, of conduct no, right. existing repo, it uses that one. Okay, so the it doesn't it, it falls back to gotcha. the wide one. And so it's like what like in the obliterating it, like it's not even seen as a possible template, or is it still? You know what I mean? I think if it's named the same thing, th oh, this I'm not sure it. about. My okay. guess is that if it's named the same thing, then it won't um you won't see it at all. Okay. Um, because you can have different types of issue templates, right? You can have ones yes. for bugs, for features, yep. for okay. whatever. No, well, that's helpful. I probably just need to like it's either that or you just get duplicate names and it's a problem, but probably not. I don't I, I don't think, think it probably do. works the way you I say. Think, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. agree. Okay. I probably just need to draw it out a little bit. Yeah, and just test it out. You've got yeah. your own German Prey test org. I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then other action items. Uh, Elizabeth, you were going to re-examine the handbook. Yes, and I, I did that, um, but I have a blocker right now because there, uh, it's unclear how we actually add or change information in the handbook. Like we make that change in the repo and it's not translating over into the actual uh, front end display of the handbook. So I'm, I'm reach, I have reached out to Jaskrat. Um, he got back to me, but has not gotten back to me again with the solution. 
Um, but he does know that we're having that problem. So hopefully he uh, responds pretty quickly and we can move forward. I, I suspect that that will kind of, that problem will go away once we do our knowledge base and kind of redo of the website. But um, that's kind of a gap between now and then. So I would like to hopefully get that problem resolved sooner than later. Okay, sounds good. Um, this also, I'm sorry, this also raised the um, thing we should probably do. We need a master document, I'm sorry. We need a, a main document that kind of um, has like our login to uh, Zoom, that has our login to Twitter, that has our login to Gitbook, that has our, like right now these things are a little distributed mm -hmm. and um, we need to probably fix that and maybe have it in the, like some sort of board level directory or something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then I don't know what this means. This is in the context of process for handing off GSOC outreach or other projects. Sean, are you back? Can you see my screen? I don't know, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm back. I can see your screen. Okay. Um, I know for the Google Summer of Docs, the process is basically not anything like Google Summer of Code. So the biggest difference is that they give us money and then we disperse it to a tech writer that we hire. And we only can submit one project per organization, it would seem. So, and then there's a the management process around Google Summer of Docs that is different than Google Summer of Code. And it's season of docs because it goes through some much longer period, like the end of the November, I think is when you have to be done. Matt's shaking his head now. That's not what this is. Okay. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't understand this yeah, action item. I can item. see that it's there, but I, I heard Google Summer of Docs for season of docs, so sorry. Your documentation. And I that, can't yes. read what's on the screen where I have oh, okay. just yet. Oh, oh, sorry. That, that's why I was asking if you could see the screen. So what's the, I can, yeah, the I can, item? Sorry, I can see the screen, but I can't read it. I should have said okay. that. No, the action item is for Sean to include, you must need really good documentation. You must also consider how to hand off project when you're done. He did that. Know what that means. Sean did that. I did that he somewhere. Did that. But that's okay, fine. so that's done. Yeah. All right. Can yeah. I tell you, can I just say what it means? So basically sure. <laughs> what, what this is, is as we have GSOC students or Season of Doc students or Outreachy students, we we're not handing off to the mentors really well. The students are just kind of vanishing. Occasionally, okay. it, it works okay, and so we just need to communicate to the mentors that part of the mentoring process, like not only requires, for example, building the handbook, but then creating really something that is a handoff document. So when they leave, we're we're in good shape because we're spending time kind of <laughs> like restitching that together sometimes. Okay. That makes sense. Um, and then Matt, you were gonna move some templates somewhere. Did that happen? Oh, I didn't do that quite yet. Um, this is the, so we have templates that are currently in the metrics repo. Okay. And then we have templates that are in the community repo, but I didn't wanna just move them quite yet just cause I think we're still kind of sorting that out. Okay. Okay. And then we had, let's see, Kevin was going to coordinate a meeting conversations about the roles of these uh, three repos, the metrics community and .github. Uh, there appears to be no interest on Slack in that. So uh, I guess I'll throw that back to you all. So I reached out and got no replies. What challenge um, are you putting so so is this something that, so, sorry, I missed the last meeting. This is probably my fault. Um, what what do we need to sort out? What, what was the purpose of the meeting? Uh, so it, it's kind of connected to some of the conversations that we've just been having. And primarily it is, what is the purpose of the community repo? So what do we want to store in the community repo? What do we want to store in the .github repo? Uh, we just we kind of need to have some clear guidance on what these different repos are for and what they're going to have uh, in them. Okay. 
Um, it's just, it's the problem, like, when you have, like, three Slack channels that kind of do the same yeah. thing, you know? Yeah, exactly. I, I miss that. Yeah, I have but, some thoughts on, on what these repos should have. Assuming we're going to shut the metrics repo down. I mean, there's kind of a assumption. There's, there's sort of a standard set of things that typically go in the community repo for a project the size of, of chaos, um, governance folder being, being one of them. Um, I, I am happy to participate in that meeting. Maybe Kevin, you, me, and Matt could just meet and sort of yeah. talk through some of it. And we That'd can be cool for me. document yeah. it. Yeah, okay. I'm, uh, I've got a uh, pretty good availability. So whatever works best for uh, you all. Yeah, you pick a time, Don, because you're probably the most schedule constrained out of okay. all of us. I'll give myself that action item to coordinate a meeting. <laughs> okay. There were a lot of action items last week. Um, and I think the other two action items are in things that we're actually going to talk about in this meeting. So we'll skip those for now since they're actually on the agenda. So we can hit the action items when we, when we get to those. Okay. Um, I think, I didn't realize we had a project board for this. We just started it, oh, so we're no. trying to, we're trying this, if oh. we hate it, we can get rid of it, and if we need to, if you want to change any panels, we actually changed a panel in DEI yesterday, you know, this is just the first pass. No, oh, I like project boards, I, plus one, count me in, right um, I assume they're pretty much populated by issues, sort of the standard. You are correct, yep. Okay. Um, so we have these two, these three on the agenda. Um, and that's an open discussion item. I feel like there's not a lot to talk about here and we have more important things on the agenda. So mm -hmm. maybe we'll just uh, call that one good. Yeah. Um, metrics release. Uh, Kevin, we're all set from Common Working Group, correct? Uh, yeah, I believe we just had the one, uh, the one metric we were releasing. Uh, okay. And I think we're good. So this is also your um, twice a year reminder that it's helpful to review metrics, <clears throat> excuse me, from the other working groups. So we should all be using this time to review a few metrics from some of the other working groups and provide some, provide some feedback and encourage people to review ours and provide feedback as well. Definitely. And then we have, um, so we have two, two items. So we have some metrics in progress that are both time waiting for metrics. And we also have the organizational diversity um, metric. Uh, and Vinod, those are both yours. Uh, which order would you like to do those in? Talk so, about those in. Yeah, for, before we go to the order, I'll say uh, for revisiting metric, I think it was decided that uh, Matt Kevin and Elizabeth are going to review it. So I haven't looked at it for revisiting the metric. Okay. So uh, as far as other two items are concerned, uh, time waiting for submitter action is ready. I just need, I've made some comments so uh, we can review that and finalize it in today's meeting. And the other is like a same thing. It's a flip other side of a coin. So. So once we finalize the time waiting for submitter action, it'll be easy for me to work on the other one. Okay. Well, um, since we want to review the time waiting for submitter action in this meeting, do you want me to stop sharing so you can share, so you can drive that conversation? Is that all right? Uh, you can share. There's nothing much. It's just a simple. Okay. Or... So, okay. Yep. My first proposal is on the changing title. It's like uh, many other metrics we have used duration and time waiting is also a duration. That's where I wanted to keep a language similar. So I propose this change request submitter action duration. 
as a proposed title. What are the thoughts? Uh, Matthew, I'm muted. I'm just reading it. I think time waiting for submitter action reads a little better. Okay. I understand the point of adding duration. Change request submitter action duration. Yeah, I, I actually agree with the nod on this. Uh, there's a there we have a lot of these time waiting for metrics. I mean, there are there are like four or five of them, uh, and we are very inconsistent in how we're naming them. So we're consistently inconsistent. <laughs> what about duration until a submitter action? Yeah, that's better. Uh, that feels a little longer now. You're br you broke up a very long bit time. Now. I don't know. Yeah, so, I sorry, what, let, me, let me ask you. I think there's maybe some confusion about what you've written here. Is this the entire title? Change request yeah. submitter action duration? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, guess, I think that's too long. I would... I would say something more to the effect of uh, submitter action duration. Or maybe real quick, let's look at the let's look at the other metrics. Somebody have those handy? Like on the spreadsheet, metric? maybe? Uh, actually, the website might be the best bet because you can look at them across working groups. I pasted the link for the spreadsheet. So there's review cycle duration within a change request, and that's. And right below it, we had time. And that's in that's here in common review cycle duration within a change request change request duration yep and that's in evolution and issue resolution duration which is also i think in evolution yeah I feel like those submitter action duration is fundamentally yep. different than time waiting for a submitter action. Yeah, I, I agree. And it, it sounds in good, but I feel like I feel like it changes the valence. Let's go through before we before we title it. Let's maybe then why don't you just kind of walk us through the metric? Okay, so here the goal is like once uh, a reviewer has reviewed the change request, how long it takes the submitter to uh, submit the response. That is the goal to, uh, we want to assess. Okay. You want to just kind of walk us through the description and objectives, like beyond beyond the question. Yeah. Let's just walk so, through the the whole metric. Just give us kind of a high level overview, and then we can come back on the yeah. details. So, like uh, mm -hmm. the main crux is this, and then we have the objectives, is like understanding uh, whether submitter is willing to work or submitter is uh, feeling too criticized, or you know, and like just wanted to assess, these are the objectives that has been mentioned in there. Uh, provide insight to the community managers where the support may be needed to the project and understand and improve onboarding and mentoring process. Understand that delays are the responsibility of a submitter. Uh, 
uh, other than this title, I felt the metric is ready and developed. There's a one comment which is like organization making the change request. Is it always the organization or it's an individual who is making the change request? <clears throat> representing an organization. I would say it's an individual. Okay. Agreed. I think it reads well. I think the yep. appointment on the description and objectives read well. Yep. Other than this, I don't find any issue. It's, I think, ready for release. Until just we have to decide the title based on the language we use in the kiosk, and then we are good. One question. Can you scroll down just a little bit, Don, down to yeah. the filters? Uh, right below organization, the one that's got the comment on it, time the change request was submitted. Is that like time of day? Uh, date it's, and time? I think it is a date and time when the request was submitted. Like, okay. For calculation mm -hmm. purpose, you extract that uh, metadata of time field to assess how long it has been taken. Because I could see that as a useful filter, like when we were yeah. in the metrics model meeting, we were looking at some stuff that Sean had done, and we could see some time spikes around the end of the yeah. semester for Sean, <laughs> which <laughs> yeah. can help you understand. It's pretty why funny. It be a delay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was pretty funny to see those. I hadn't noticed that before, or really <laughs> honestly been aware of it before the metrics model meeting. It's not that surprising, I suppose. Either. No, no, it's really not. So maybe date and data date and time. And then change request. Is the, uh, the focus request that we want to assess, like there's a one request in which there are multiple reviews. Yeah. So it is a filter, you filter the change request and within that request, you look at the reviews or like submit actions. So could that be maybe change request size or something? Change request seems a little un... Okay. Hold on. So while we're waiting for Matt to come back, yeah, why don't yeah. we talk for a minute about the title again? Now that we have a better idea of what's actually in this metric. So one of the edits that was just made was changing it to date and time. Uh, so the title currently is just time. Uh, looking at common, there well, are that, other. That's just a filter, though. That's one of the filters. Oh, uh, gotcha. Okay. Later for the metric. But there, but there was there was a distinction for. Are we just talking about the time or? Yeah. If, yeah, I, I think still with date. Okay. If something's taking a long time around Christmas. Right. Makes sense. Uh, so it common does have other time. This, if these two go through, that'll be four metrics that common has that are basically time for something to happen. Right, so there is so there is consistency in the way that common is naming them. Oh, time to first response and time to close. Yeah. Yeah, we also have uh, we also have duration ones too. So I don't know. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So when I <laughs> when I went through all these, I found this okay. We are using duration time. I was not sure. That's where I raised this specifically to have a common consensus that we can accord, like adopt throughout the chaos. I feel like there is a little bit of a difference though be between duration and time. Like the duration is um like the wait, go back to that screen you were just on, Don. Yeah, sure. If you don't mind, thank you. Like the review cycle duration. So it's like, yeah, it's time passes, but it, it to me, it's like a different connotation. It's like a, a, 
uh, I don't know how to say it, put it in words, but like the the whole package of the the whole thing is going into this duration. But time passes is just like a little chunk of. I, I know I'm not making any sense at all. But does no, anyone... I absolutely, I absolutely agree with you. I think I think duration is like um, like the the whole thing. So the time it takes to do some like big big thing, like the the time from here to here. Yeah. Whereas yes. I feel like time two is the time it takes until you get to like the thing. So the time to first response, the time to close. Yes. And so yes. duration yes. is more of a like big picture kind of thing. Uh I still feel both are similar, like time to first respond is still from a start to the response time, which is a duration same again. So the, the review cycle duration within a change request is the amount of time it takes for the full review within a change request. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the time <laughs> waiting for submitter action is the amount of time that it takes a submitter of a change request to make edits based on a review. Yes. So it's, it's a, a so it's a subset of review duration. cycle duration. Yes. Exactly. And we don't uh, and we so, do not we do not link to it or discuss that in this metric at all. Mm. That is where change. I have added the change request word because change request is the we have a change request duration, so it's a subset of change request duration within that. So this is to me the balance between time and duration is not confusing at all. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why. Like why this one word needs to be super consistent i think it's way for me personally it's way clearer time waiting for a submitter action like that tells me exactly what that is or you know time to close that tells me exactly what that is and it's it's not like i think duration again is like how long something lasts and not you know like how long did that whole review cycle last that's why we're using duration there so i think it's okay to use time waiting in my personal opinion it's okay to use it it's clear yeah i agree with that but I, I think you should also refer to the review cycle yeah agreed duration metric somewhere in here yeah if, if this is a subset of that other one then it definitely needs to be discussed and i'm okay with i'm okay with the time as well rather than duration uh i recommended we look at it last meeting just for consistency sake so i'm uh yeah. i'm fine coming to this conclusion uh, I will say the the submitter action is a little bit odd for me. So it, it wasn't immediately clear that we were talking about change requests. Uh, but maybe that's okay. Is it really a submitter response or is it a submitter action? Uh, I think it's it's submitter action, right? Because the this is actually so it's the amount of time that it takes the submitter to make the edits and respond to. It's both. Uh, okay. it's, yeah, make the edits and respond to requested yeah. reviews, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's both. Like either he can he or she can make changes or say no, these are not doable or whatever the response be. Yeah. So so time waiting for submitter action is kind of it's written from the perspective of the maintainer. Like we're waiting for this contributor to make the changes. Uh, However, the metric itself is really about the amount of time that it takes for the contributor to do the work. <coughs> to respond to the review and do the yeah. work. <coughs> so maybe it's not an issue. It just, it seems a little off to me for some reason. <laughs> We have an alternative. Right now, it's like in that last second to last sentence in the description. It is for an answer or a revision. 
You see that there? Mm -hmm. It's waiting for an answer or a revision. So action seems like the best word here. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay leaving it. And maybe we see what happens when it goes into uh, uh, review. Yeah. So it's just, it just, it doesn't quite feel right to me, but at the same time, I don't have a better alternative. So maybe, uh, maybe it is okay. So. Okay. Does anybody else have any other feedback on this metric? I think it reads pretty well, to be honest. Looks good. So I think the action items on this one now are um, to basically just address the address the comments yeah, okay. and, and mention the other metric. Yep. And this Matt, is. Oh, oh, sorry. I was just going to say I think this will go into the continuous release process any yep. continuous review cycle anyway it will be after a month i guess once the freeze yeah. period is over right okay. yeah and and then i, I was going to say matt matt and elizabeth <laughs> the the time duration thing might be that might be something we want to look at when we are going through and reviewing the old metrics and i'm not and i'm not saying we have to change it but i think that the time duration thing i think I think it would be important to kind of keep that in mind when we're looking at it. Maybe we could, like when we provide the recommendations to the working groups, we could yes. have things yeah. like must must do, and then things like think about, <laughs> you know, maybe consider. <laughs> yeah, and and even you know, moving forward when we when we're creating these metrics, I think the I think that's definitely something that should be considered. The are we using the time to, or are we using duration, uh, or are we using some other form of uh, some other naming convention for these? Uh, and I think it's okay to use both. I just, uh, especially if they mean slightly different things in, in for the metric. Uh, but it just it I it I do think it needs to be considered though. So. Okay. Is there, do we, so I know we've talked about this several times. Do we have a place where we define these common common terms and talk about how, how people should be using them? Uh, there is a glossary in the community handbook, uh, but no one knows how to edit it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, and- uh, that, is, that is the glossary, is it, is it, is that intended to provide like just general like chaos terms or is that intended to provide consistency across metrics? I feel like the two have slightly different purposes. Like there's a general purpose glossary that if people are trying to understand what something means. And, and, and this is more, I see this more as um, metric style guide kind of things that, that you would see like big companies. Like mm -hmm. when we talk about this product, we talk about it in this way and it means this. I feel like maybe we need kind of a style guide for developing metrics. Um, I love that idea. That could. Are be you a good at style point. guides, Elizabeth? <laughs> nah. uh, I use them a lot. I've never created one, but uh, actually, that's a lie. I have created. I created one at Pivotal. So yes. Well, then you are just leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of us. Um, okay, so Elizabeth to look at maybe creating a style guide with guidance for metrics, including terminology like duration versus time, time to, time until, time to something. Yeah, Elizabeth, I have comments on this too, from a layout perspective. So just kind of how we do like objective sections, they have a tendency to be like points, not narrative. I think we should yeah. be consistent on that. Um, some of our descriptions are really long. Some of them are really short. We probably need to <laughs> 
figure out a way to express how long they should be, things like that. It's yeah. a function of the people on the call. Often. Yeah, that's where a style guide would come in. Yeah. Uh, maybe the, yeah, exactly. maybe, the, maybe the style guide is, uh, is an outcome of the metrics review. Maybe we can kind of take notes and maybe construct that document as we're going through and uh, reviewing all of these metrics. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. And then to the, uh, the, the glossary issue that was mentioned as well, uh, I think uh, once the knowledge base is built on the website, it could be pretty easy to populate a glossary uh, uh, on that knowledge base as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that might be that might be something we can we can add we can add into it. I was just looking to see what we have in here now. Um, it's kind of higher level terms. Yeah, yeah. This is this is more of a you're new to chaos. Here's here's how we talk about the things. I feel like the metrics one. We need something something very specific for those of us that are developing metrics on a regular basis. Okay, cool. All right. Um, So the organizational diversity metric, um, well, we're deferring that until Matt and Elizabeth deliver their memo to the common working group about our metrics and whether we need to update any of them. Um, it looks like the privacy ethics document is still um, still in progress. I think we were talking about that in the- Yeah, it's actually coming down. along. Um, so I was, this is that I've been merging like six different documents here. And so the top is, is privacy. So mm -hmm. if you scroll down, this is just like intro, like who we are. And then there's this privacy section. And then if you keep scrolling down, and then there's an ethics section. And I've been working to Kind of like see where it says ethics confidential data and metrics like that's mm -hmm. the same header in privacy but obviously this one's ethics things to consider so those are all parallel um i've been <clears throat> the only thing i couldn't find and maybe somebody is that last one if there's any published guidance around ethics there's like i find a lot around ethical ai and mm -hmm. i was wondering if like Mozilla didn't really seem to have anything, which I sort of was hoping they would. So Talking about the ethics of the use of data. Yeah, like they they have a privacy statement in their manifesto. Yeah, but not really anything around ethics. Have you asked Emma? No, mm -mm, I was just looking around the internet. I would I would share this document with Emma and ask her if she's seen any published <laughs> guidance on okay on the That's ethics. A good idea. I think. I think, first of all, I think she might have good feedback on the document in general, sure. if she happens yeah. to have time. Um, but yeah, if anybody knows or has run across it, it might be Emma. Okay. Well, then just also like maybe a general action item to everybody here. Like if you happen to stumble across something with respect to ethics, and not just like an article, but actual, you know, like eth not an article like ethics are important, but like a, some guideline, like here are the things to think about with respect to ethics. Um, just let me know or drop them in the document or whatever. But I think it's coming along. Hey, Matt, are you in that uh, ethical open source Slack? Mm, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm in that one. I'm in that one too. I'm, I'm a lurker. I don't <coughs> hate, but that might be yeah, also another. Here. Yeah. Could you ask? Yes. Yeah, I was just looking to see if there's a place to have that conversation. Yeah, I can what's post that, something. What's that called? The ethical? It is called ethical source and it's mostly about uh, ethics in open source. Okay. 
I'm looking for a link to ethicalsource.slack.com. Let me see if I can. I don't know if I can invite people or not. No, I was just I'll take a look and I'll put it in there. necessarily need to <clears throat> there. Okay, but I gave you the action item. Just handing out action items. That's what I do. So you had manager right there. <laughs> so great shooter with upper management written all over you. <laughs> all right. I think we have actually reached the end of the agenda. Is there anything anyone else wants to talk about in our remaining six minutes? I will just say a couple things in my context with the LF. It's this is kind of chaos, Connie, but we're good with our we'll be good with a room. For OSS EU, it'll be the same as kind of like what we had in um, Seattle. So awesome. it's, it'll, we'll probably do a half day. I think if we go longer, we have to pay for it, but they yeah. provide a room for a half day. Um, and then I talked to Brian about uh, the discourse, like hosting it. Mm -hmm. You know, well, we just need them to, it's just a DNS URL thing. They just, well, they he, just need to, oh, go ahead. Yeah, he, he recommended. He's like, try to find a hosting service. He's like, managing forums is a pain in the rear. Mm -hmm. That was his, just his own personal recommendation. Well, that's what, yeah, that's what we've done. We're using this a discourse hosting service. Okay. Yeah. That's, okay. So that's the, what that DNS not... and if that once that DNS entry that I sent is resolved, mm -hmm. then we actually will have a test site. Okay. That we can start to use to organize our discussion around how to design it. Okay. Uh, Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, let me know on Slack when that DNS entry is made and then I can. I haven't even asked for it just because I was asking them about whether or not the LF hosts oh, anything okay. similar. Yeah. Know, and Gabe was saying that he thought it was free for open source projects. So we might just need to reach out to them and see if we it's, need to pay it all. I did get a substantial discount and I need the actually need the DNS resolve to see how much substantial it is. It might be down to zero. I don't, I don't know, but I can't check until the discourse.ks.community is resolving because that's what my login is tied to. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks everybody. I feel like we made some good progress on the time waiting for submitter action metric. And yeah. uh, we just handed out a whole bunch of action items. So, did we so I give you four minutes to work on your action items. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't feel like we left with more than we came in with. <laughs> we totally did. Totally. <laughs> All right, everybody. All right. Thanks, everybody. <coughs> Bye. Bye. Later. Bye.